All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at nine o'clock on the dot. Dr. Gina Kalora here with CEOE and want to take a moment. Thank you so much for, for making the time uh, to be here with us this morning. We know there is a lot going on, right? And there's a lot going on, not just locally, right? But at a state level, national level and globally. So um, being here this morning, having you in attendance, um, it means the world and also signifies a lot about where you're at in the journey and wanting to improve certain things and, and make sure that the next time something like this happens, right, there's perhaps a different approach, a different perspective. All well, the meanwhile, making sure that while you're enduring this particular time of chaos, of, of kind of frantic energy and um, a, a bit of disorder, that you're able to navigate those waters um, and minimize the turbulence to ultimately lead to a positive and constructive outcome. So uh, again, my name is Dr. Gino Kalora with CEO Effectiveness. Uh, we were founded um, well over 10 years ago by Dr. Bill Anton, who is a world-renowned clinical psychologist. We have a fantastic team of PhDs who are all respective experts in their field from organizational leadership um, to industrial organizational psychology, team optimization, human optimization, and overall making sure that you, your business, uh, and, and folks within your organization can operate at their most optimal level to, to achieve some incredible results. So today's topic um, is, is a special one because there's a lot of facets that go into understanding chaos, understanding the intersections between chaos and order. And obviously what we are experiencing, by any stretch of the imagination, is chaotic right now. <clears throat> what we are learning with, with COVID-19 um, is is we don't know a lot, right? We, there's a lot we do know, right? But there's also a lot that we still don't know. And that's scary, right? Our brain does not like ambiguity, does not like being in the dark or not knowing what's going on. So it interprets all these different things as danger, right? And, and so uh, that will invoke your stress response system, which is directly connected to what we call your HPA axis, right? Which controls some very important neurohormones um, that, that keep you regulated and able to rise to the occasion. The challenge is that most of us don't know how to manage and navigate that stress response, right? We, we have a, an immediate reaction, right? Which is very, very old in the sense that it's been around for millions of years, how it is that we deal with things. Um, but the most important part is having the right steps and the right tools to equip you and empower you to understand when that stress response system is kicking in, allow you to think as clearly as possible, given the situation, and be able to respond accordingly in a calm manner. Look, I, I know we all know that at any given time, things can change, right? And it's, we give that kind of lip service. We don't really put a lot of investment into, oh yeah, I know things could change. Yeah, but then what, right? What is that blueprint? What's the infrastructure behind that that will allow you to deal with that change? So many of us, when we created our businesses, when we stepped into a leadership role in our organization, we had a set way of doing things, right? That's what pushed us to making our business successful, right? Or organization successful. But if you look at doing something just like a, a basic SWOT analysis, right? We all know what's the SWOT analysis, right? Taking a look at what, what, what's happening with your strengths, your weaknesses, um, opportunities, and threats that affect your organization. When you look at the threats part, that T, okay? What have you done to prepare if those threats become amplified, right? In the field of, of mathematics, there is what we call chaos theory. And what chaos theory says is this. Whenever something is an unknown, right, whenever there, there's uh, certain variables that affect an equation, right, the initial equation, that those initial variables, those become amplified. So when you look at your SWOT analysis, and those, in particular, those threats, if those become massively amplified, a decrease in revenue, an increase in turnover, not knowing what the market's going to do, not having immediate market feedback because you're dealing with conditions that have all been hypothetical and you didn't really put a lot of time into building a thorough contingency plan, right? So we want to make sure that you have the skills to address those threats, to address what to do in times of crises, okay? So let, let's go through seven basic things, okay? So first and foremost, in times of chaos, communication is everything, okay? If you are a leader and you are leading your team through a chaotic time, if you are not communicating with them about the knowledge that you have and also what you don't have, right? 
be transparent. Have a very real conversation because look, the reality is that the folks who are going through that chaos with you and are looking to you for leadership, they don't want you to sell them a false bill of goods. They don't want you to pump pseudo confidence. They want to know, all right, boss, what exactly are we dealing with here? And, and do you know something that we don't? Because if you do, please tell us because we may know something that you don't know, right? And so many hands make for a light lift. So your ability to communicate effectively with your team is paramount, okay? So make sure you tell them what you do know, what you don't know, and look, if you don't know and they don't know, put a timeline together, right? Work collaboratively so they know that, listen, my input is very, very much valued. It's not going to be something pushed off to the wayside. It's going to be taken to heart and it's going to be applied, right? That makes a big difference. When you want collectivity, when you want buy-in, when you want to increase the trust that you have with your team, because look, in unknown times with uncertain variables, you can't look at very specific tactics, very specific attributes. You have to start with principles, right? Those same principles that guided you to success, right? Go back and visit those. Go back and say, gosh, when I first started the company, I didn't know left from right. I didn't really quite understand how the market operated, but when I got immediate market feedback, right? Then I really started learning, but I was open and I was amenable to it. As time goes by, we get conditioned to doing what works because we know it works. Well, given certain market conditions, you're right, it will work. But what if the market conditions change? What if your target market changes? What if your target market no longer has the revenue to do business with you? Now you have to reshape and refocus elsewhere. Now you have to start that process over again. And it's you being open to change. It's you being open to revisiting those original principles in the first place. But you got to communicate with your team because the difference is that when you started before, you didn't have the resources that you do now, right? And so that scramble, that chaos, the feeling of loss, right? I'm losing these opportunities. I'm, I'm losing the ability to, to hold on to these team members because company revenue is not where it's at and I can't make payroll the same way. We understand, right? But go back and revisit what got you to success in the first place, right? What have you learned along the way and how can you apply that to those principles that you carry, okay? All right, so um, number two, if you don't know and you're creating that plan, right, make sure that the plan feeds sound strategies, right? So numbers, having the right strategies. Now, how do you know what the right strategies are? Well, look, you're in business. You know, as well as I do, that when you want to find out what works, you got to put it out there. We could all have the best ideas in the whole world, especially when we're thinking about building through chaos, but people have real needs. The market has real needs, right? You're not, you're not selling to a robot. You're selling to a human being. You have a product or a service that is going to be beneficial, helpful, change lives to another human being. So have those conversations. People are in need right now. And there's tremendous opportunities everywhere, not just for your team, but for the marketplace and for yourself to grow, okay? So make sure that when you do have that plan, it's based off of sound principles that feed appropriate strategies, all right, to actually implement and build and continue to have that cohesion within your business. Okay, so number three, right? Th th this is important and I can't talk about this enough, right? Whenever you're getting input from your team as you're going through a chaotic time, right? The importance of you applying that input has every single thing to do with you reducing uncertainty with your team, okay? So, so what do I mean by that? Your team members, they're looking to you for that guidance. They're looking to you to be that beacon of light. And it's hard to do when we ourselves are trying to figure out what our next move is. Am I turning left? Am I turning right? Am I going backwards? Am I going forwards? That sort of ambiguity often lends itself to frantic energy, right? And when we're being frantic and we're kind of all over the place, right? It's very difficult for people to look at that and say, mm, I've got confidence in what he or she is doing it's not going to happen, right? They're more than likely not going to have the confidence. But if you start asking and applying input, they're going to say, you know what? He or she may not have all the answers, but we're in this together. We're in this fight. We're in this maze. We're in this, this tunnel of darkness together. And I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I've got the right people with me 
who are flexible, who are adaptable, who understand the importance of planning and having a plan based off of principles that have strategies that can change real time, depending on what the market is doing and what the market is telling us about what we're bringing to the table, okay? All right, so number four leads into being flexible, right? So this is super important, especially for those of us who have tasted success and have been drinking from the cup of success for many years. We have a system that it works. It's push button, right? That is what every business owner, every organization strives for. You want to be as efficient and as effective as possible. What does that mean in business? Well, what's the easiest way to optimize our product, our service, and make maximum revenue, right? And so our ability to be flexible and adaptive to a market that we thought we knew, right? But didn't realize, go back to that SWOT analysis, the threats that affect the vulnerability of that market and how we would adhere to those needs, right? Depending on the shifts and vulnerability, depending on the shifts and what it is that they're experiencing, how is it we can adapt our product or our service to fulfill those needs, right? And so you being able to have principles and strategies that are flexible and adaptive is very important. Now that's on the business side. Let's talk about the personal side. Your ability to be adaptive emotionally your ability to be flexible with your communication is very important. If it's a here all end all, what I say in the buck stops here, if folks can, can, on your team can tell that there's a sense of ambiguity, if there's a sense of you don't know what to do, do you really think they're going to have a lot of confidence and buy into what you're saying and how you're saying it? They're not, right? That's basic human nature. If you can't relate, if you can't have that honesty factor, right? And be flexible and understand, look guys, I, you know, I, I am scared, right? I am upset about what's happening, but I'm confident in the skill sets that we have as an organization. I'm confident in the principles that guide us as an organization. And I know with proper communication, with proper teamwork and the proper input from the market, we're gonna figure it out and we're gonna be even better for it, okay? So that's really important. Whenever you're being flexible and adaptive, it's not just about the business side of it, right? It's you personally, emotionally. Well, you know when we're talking about external crises, external chaos, every single one of us have an internal chaotic battle going on. And often the outward reflection of what we're showing emotionally that can hinder our adaptability in an emotional sense, that is, is, is something that is very important to kind of grasp what it is that's causing you internal conflict and why you're responding the way that you are to the external crises. So speak to that, recognize that in yourself, recognize that in your team members. And if you can recognize that, you can speak to it and give them the proper guidance and leadership to maintain their focus, to maintain their commitment, and to maintain their trust in the process of getting through this hard time. Okay, so number five. So be positive, right? Be positive and be calm, right? So, so th this is really important. You know, there, there's folks who, who believe that now when you say be positive, it's all smiles, but in reality, I'm actually crying inside. No, 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 no. It's subtle positivity and subtle confidence. It doesn't mean you negate the facts. It doesn't mean that you negate how you're feeling. It's how you're going to manage and what you're going to do with what you're feeling. If I sit here and I say, oh my gosh, the market is crumbling. The demand is going down. I'm going to have to lay off people. I'm just going to have to close up shop. My life is over. No. Now's the time for reinvention. Now's the time to use chaos as a catalyst. And guess what? It may not feel like it, but what an incredible opportunity. What an opportunity to reinvent yourself. What an opportunity to reinvent what you do and how you do it with principles that are even, they're even better. They're sharper. They're, they're more to the point. They're at the tip of that spear of what it is that you and your company do. And it's very hard to, to remember that when you're in the middle of the fray, because there's emotional connections. If you're having to let people go and what that means and what that looks like, feeling like you failed them. Listen, what's happening right now is that if anyone's control, okay? And if you have the proper leadership, if you have the proper plan, if you have the proper communication and the proper strategies, you're going to get through it. And you may be a little bit different on the other side, but you're gonna be okay. And so is your team and so is your organization. Okay, so, so number six, right? Create small wins, super important. So when we're talking about building that confidence back up, right? If you're getting input from your team and you're directly responding to things that are going on in the marketplace and you start seeing little things start to work 
right? Messaging that's working, sales that are working, client services that are working. Celebrate those, right? You are now building something new. You're getting that new feedback and your team needs to know about it. Your team, need, your team needs to share in that celebration and those wins with you. And it doesn't have to be the grandiose, oh my gosh, we're turning the company around. No, it's, hey, guess what? We just found an opportunity we never knew existed. We never would have known exists unless this thing, this chaos happened, right? Again, chaos as a catalyst. It's a catalyst for you to bring something new, right? That to have something that is groundbreaking, innovative, that speaks to the needs of your marketplace. Okay, so that's really important. All right, number seven, be visible. This is super, super important when it comes to your team. If you are not visible, if you are not engaged with your team, if you're kind of sitting off to the backdrop and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to do these calls uh, once a week and, um, you know, I, I know I'm probably going to have to let some people go um, or we're going to have to close doors temporarily. The worst thing you can do is hide in the shadows. Your team wants and needs to hear from you. They need to look at you, right? Even, even through all these, these dark times, they need to be able to look at you and say, golly, how, how he or she, how they managed that crisis, how they managed that chaos, how they led us through that chaos was incredible. And so what ends up happening? The respect level goes up. The trust level goes up. You increase the rapport building. And when things come full circle, they're never going to forget that. And that is an incredible sign of leadership, staying actively involved, leading and staying engaged in the worst of times, be there, be present, okay? It is paramount for you to provide that visibility because if you're there and you're listening and you're asking for feedback and you're speaking, right, to the internal crises that your team members are going through to have a calming effect on the external crises, right? That's important because they're never gonna forget what you did, how you did it, and the energy that you brought to the table. You know, one thing our founder, Dr. Bill Anton says, when it comes to chaos, when it comes to stress, right, it's simple. He says, look, all your frantic energy, anytime you start feeling frantic, think of something that is calming. Swap the frantic for the calming, right? So take your frantic energy and replace it with calming energy, right? Take the deep breaths, meditate, get some clarity of mind, get yourself recentered because there's no way you can lead others if you're in a constant state of what about this what about that what do i do about this it doesn't work that way okay you have got to be that beacon of light you have got to be that calming force the blanket that provides warmth to a cold situation that's on you as a leader that 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 is the responsibility that is the charge when it comes through looking at chaos as a catalyst Right? We can look at chaos as doom and gloom, or we can look at it as a catalyst to jump to the next level of effectiveness, of success, to reinvent ourselves to be better, stronger, faster, and more effective than ever. That's really when you start having that litmus test of what are you forged of, right? How strong is that metal that binds you together that allows you to push your message forward? Okay, so let's do a quick recap, all right? So um, number one, Communication, right? Communication is exceedingly important. And, and talk to folks about what you know and what you don't know. And look, and tell them when to expect an answer for the what you don't know stuff, right? Listen, I, I don't know the answer to that, but we're working on it. And as a matter of fact, do you have any input for me? Do you, what are your thoughts on this, okay? So communication, very important. Explain the plan, right? What is the plan and what is the plan based off of? Again, principles, right? Have your plan. You want to be fluid. The only way for you to be fluid is to not stay confined in specific lanes. You have to be okay with switching lanes. You have to be okay with merging onto a different direction. But what are the principles that are guiding the decisions to do so? Stick to the principles will allow you to stick to the plan, which will be fluid in nature. Okay? Number three. Apply input. When you communicate and you create a plan, whatever input you're getting from those team members, those trusted colleagues, put it to good use, right? And if immediately you think, oh, it's not a good idea, right? Walk through the steps with them. Tell them why you don't think it's a good idea. And, and you may be surprised at what their rebuttal is. They may give you some food for thought. 
you never ever considered. All right, going back to before, many hands make for a light lift. Different folks have different strengths and weaknesses, right? If you haven't gone through and, and done a Neo 360 within our five factor theory to figure out from a personality perspective, what are the strengths and weaknesses of my team members? You have to do that, right? And, and, and reach out to us to have that assessment done because now more than ever is a time to understand who and what you're dealing with, right? Especially within your organization, okay? All right, uh, number four, right? Be flexible and be adaptive. Again, principles allow you to be fluid, but you yourself, you have to be flexible. You cannot confine yourself emotionally, psychologically, or professionally to doing something just a certain way because in times of uncertainty, there's a lot we don't know. And you're not gonna know until it reveals itself, right? And so in that interim, what are you doing? right? What are, you, what are you committed to? And it's very hard to be committed to something that you don't know what it is. So be flexible, be adaptive. Number five, be positive, right? Again, this doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're selling a false bill of goods and you're putting a fake smile on. No, what this means is you're being real, but you're also being optimistic with whatever the outcomes are going to be because you know, as an organization and as a leader, you have got the right principles guiding you, which ripple into the organization, okay? So being able to, to be positive does not mean that you're sitting there and trying to pump your team up with a bunch of fake stuff. It means that we're gonna get through it. I don't know exactly how, right? We're gonna figure that out together. But what I do know is that I am confident that as a team, we're gonna get through it, okay? Number six, create the small wins, right? Again, so when we look at confidence, building that confidence. What does confidence mean? Let's go back to the, to the Latin meaning of it, con fide, right? With faith, having faith in yourself and your team members. Well, how do you build that? Small wins, small signs of evidence that, you know what, what we're doing is right. And it needs to be celebrated. It needs to be recognized. And you know what, golly, when I look at this plan, John and, John and Suli, Susie, you guys had this idea and this was incredible. This is the exact kind of feedback that we need to be able to address the issues at hand. Your team needs to hear that. They need every dose of confidence. They need every dose of positivity they can get as they are navigating these dark and uncertain waters in the same boat that you are, okay? And number seven, be visible, right? You've got to stay engaged with your team. Do not step back and sit in the shadows and say, Hey guys, yeah, we're here. It's you know, not, not fun, but we're going to get through it. And that's it. No. More now than ever, your team needs you to be all hands on deck. They want to see you. They want to hear from you. They want to know your thoughts. They want to know your direction. They want to know what is your plan. Because look, at the end of the day, it's, it's very scary for, for those of us who are business owners and top level leaders. But at the same time, for those who are following and don't have any idea about the direction, it's even scarier. Right. And so when you're thinking about the, their livelihood, their well-being, it's really important for you to be that call me beacon. And look, even in the worst circumstances, if, if there's a departure with your team, if you have to let certain team members go, they're never going to forget how you made them feel. Right. As they were navigating those waters, they're not going to forget that. And no one is, is, is happy. Right. About having to be laid off from a job. Right. But at the same time, if they have an understanding of the 360 big picture, they're gonna understand that, look, it's not something wrong that, that my boss did or the owner did. It's just circumstances within the marketplace that perhaps weren't accounted for because it's something that's unprecedented. But I appreciate the way that they guided us through and they did everything they could right at the time. And, and for us to go back and look now and say, you know what? If I could go back and do it all over again, this is what I would do differently. And, and, and this is what we are doing differently. And when you do that, thing differently according to the plan that's based on principles you'd be amazed at the positivity that it can conjure up because it shows that adaptability and when you have that adaptability your team knows that no matter what comes your way when we get through this golly he or she you got you got it down pat you know how to guide us through a category five hurricane right and that's incredibly important so with that being said, Dr. Gina Colora, uh, looking at chaos as a catalyst, right? And being able to understand that chaos provides incredible opportunity for us, not just to reinvent ourselves, but to make ourselves better, to make our team members better, and not just better employees, but better people, right? And those principles that you will guide, right? They're going to ripple and they're going to carry those with them. 
Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, go on to the to the chat box. You're going to see if you kind of put your mouse um, over the screen of where the webinar is, you're going to see where there's a small box on the right hand side um, that says chat. If you click chat, you can send me a question. Now you will also see in that chat box, I have got um, my email address and I have my personal number. Okay, so I don't typically give that out. But given the circumstances of what we're all going through, we here at CEOE, we wanna make sure that we're very accessible to you um, if you need anything, any sort of guidance, any sort of uh, conversation, strategic planning, we're here to help you with that, right? That is, is what we do and we do it very, very well, right? And so um, we have an incredible team of six PhDs who are world-class. Um, in addition to PhDs, they've been at the top of the corporate uh, ladder as well as small to medium business and entrepreneurs. So we can speak to a myriad of audiences about this particular topic and many, many others. So I'll, I'll leave that chat box open. If you have any questions, put them there or you can email me or you can obviously give me a call. All right, stay safe stay healthy. And uh, we here at CEOE, we're thinking about you. We're here for you and, uh, and take care. All right.